Hey YouTube, how's it going? Well, welcome back to another video. Alright, I just want to give you guys a warning for this video. Well, not for this video, but a warning. Alright, please beware of the insta woke Negro. Alright, please beware of this male or female. You know, insta woke Negroes. Alright, beware of them. Alright. And some of you are probably thinking or asking, what is an insta woke Negro? Well, an insta woke Negro is basically a Negro or a black person who is posturing themselves as being woke, right? You know, socially conscious of the things that are going on with the community and, you know, the things that, you know, seemingly the community goes through, or at least certain. Um, segments of the community goes through, you know, like, for example, police brutality, right? Or, you know, pay inequality, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. And examples of some insta woke Negroes, in my opinion, um, T.I., he's the, like probably the first one who popped into my mind, uh, Snoop Dogg. Some, some of you going to be mad at this one, but um, Kendrick Lamar, I think he a, he a low-key insta-woke Negro. Um, Monique, I like Monique, but I think she is a low-key insta-woke Negro. Um, right now, we got, you know, Viola Davis. I hate to put her on the list, but I think she's like acting like a low-key insta-woke Negro. Um, Oprah, insta-woke Negro, right? And there's a lot, there's more examples, but those are just a few that popped into my mind, right? And these folks oftentimes will posture their problems or the struggles that they personally have and make it seem like, oh, you know, we need to do this for the community. Pretty much coming off as if you're for the community, it's like, let me see, how can, how, how can I put this? It's like it's self-serving, but under the guise of being for the community, you know, under the guise of being selfless, right? And let me give you, I guess, a few examples I can think of, all right? You know, say um, Kanye West, right? You know, he's speaking up about, you know, racism, you know, in the fashion industry, right? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, there's a racism. Like, what about the racism that regular folk on Main Street dealing with, right? And I'm not saying that he can't advocate and talk about other places where racism exists. I'm not saying that, but... It comes off as if you're trying to get people on board with your cause as a black person, but really the cause is self-serving. You just want your piece of the pie or, you know, your seat at the table, I'll say. You just want your seat at the table because it seems like once these insta-woke Negroes kind of get what they want, they'll just drop, drop out of the movement, right? You won't really hear about them too much, right? And also, kind of like notice when these insta woke Negroes really want to speak on something. Oftentimes, it's because they have been affected by it, right? And th their money has been affected. Their bank account has been affected by it. So it's like racism, racism, right? They're talking all this like racism talk and, you know, quoting Malcolm X and making slavery analogies etc etc right you know having those saying those things to sort of trigger something in you right but notice they only tend to speak up when it personally affects their bank account their money their finances right because you notice like they don't tend to speak up on other issues that seemingly don't affect them right like i haven't really heard kanye west speak up about police brutality that much i could be wrong i just have maybe i just haven't heard it but i have not heard that right same thing with say monique you know i 
Don't have anything against Monique. I do like Monique and I have supported Monique with my viewership and my dollars. All right. But I feel like she is like a low key insta woke Negro, you know, because let's say if everything had went well for her in her career. Right. Would she really be speaking up saying all this stuff? And talking about pay inequality for black women in Hollywood. Would she really be talking about that if she was winning in Hollywood? Right. Just how you don't see um, Taraji P. Henson talking about pay inequality in Hollywood for black women. Right now, because Taraji P. Henson is like, you know, the low-key uh, black it girl right now. Right? Or, you know, say Zoe Saldana. I know some people are like, is Zoe black? I don't know. I'm going to count her as black. All right? I think Zoe is um, black. I think she has claimed blackness. Um, or at least Afro-Latina. I know that's a, I know that is, it gets to a gray area. I know, all right? You know, but, you know, I'll say she tends to play the black roles or take the black roles, you know? But let me know what you think about that situation right there in the comments section. You think Zoe Saldana is a black woman? I, per I personally do view her as a black woman. I don't know if she views herself as a black woman, but let me know. How you, how do you view Zoe Saldana, right? You know, Afro Latina, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, you don't really see um, Zoe, da Zoe Saldana and Taraji P. Henson talking. And I'm sure they feel some type of a way about, you know, pay inequalities and between, you know, the white actresses and the black actresses and the white actors. And, you know, I know, I'm sure they do. But you don't hear them because, you know, they kind of are in a good place right now, right? Even though things aren't the best, it's like a good place and they don't want to mess it up, right? Let's be real. So it's like, if you want to, how can I put this? It's like, don't speak up now when it's been going on forever. Like, don't speak up when it starts to personally affect you. You know, don't, don't come up now, right? Oh, since you affected all, now it's like all hands on deck. We got to galvanize. We got to come together. We got to march in the streets. You know, hashtag, you know, Oscar so white. Hashtag uh, pay inequality. You know, hashtag, you know, they're not promoting my movie. They're not putting a big budget behind me. You know, the struggle continues. Hashtag, et cetera. Right? But before, when everything was all good in the hood, I didn't hear any. Like, these things were happening while everything was good in the hood for you. But why do you want to speak up now? Why now? Why not when that black woman over there was going through it? Or that black man over there was going through it? Right? Why speak up now? Right? You know? And another one, you know? Oprah Winfrey, right? And she, you know, well, I don't, low-key, I don't think o Oprah Winfrey is like a quote-unquote insta-woke Negro, but, um, you know, y'all remember when Oprah was in France and she went to the um, Hermes store after hours and they wouldn't serve, serve her because it was after hours and she... Turned it into a whole big um, scandal, right? To, to the point where the representative or whoever of the company went on to her show and even offered her like a free gift, right? And apologized and all that good stuff. Because, you know, Oprah Winfrey felt like, you know, I'm privileged, right? She was talking about discrimination and going against discrimination while at the same time wanting someone to discriminate in her favor, right? She was talking about being discriminated against because they would not discriminate for her <laughs> in her favor, right? In the same, another situation happened when she was like in Switzerland and she was trying to buy a purse and they was like, no, try this one. And she was like, I want that one. And it's like, oh, that one's like really expensive. And I guess folks didn't know that she was Oprah, right? You know, you know, and she made that into a big issue and seemingly the black people in Hollywood was supporting her in both of the situations, right? 
But it's like, okay, that's cool, that's good. But where it has the other, like racism has been going on for years. I know Oprah, no Oprah from the South and she from a, the time era when, you know, it was like way more overt. So I know she know about racism, come on. <laughs> like from Mississippi and then she moved to Tennessee. Like I know you know about racism one way or the other, right? Being a black woman in like what the 50s, 60s or 70s or something like that in the South. <laughs> but I haven't really heard Oprah speak on any other issues of racism that much. Although I will say she did do something with like Hurricane Katrina. She did do a special on that. And I think Oprah probably has, but you know, you don't really hear about it, right? She know she know how to play her cards when it comes to that because she don't want to like piss off her white folk. You know, her white folks who support her, even though they didn't support her network own. And then she had to come to the black folks to support it and save the network because, you know, black folks are really, you know, particularly black actors, um, you know, really desperate for work, you know, pounding the pavement in Hollywood, just trying to get a gig, right? So, you know, Oprah Winfrey financing some shows on her network and airing them on, on her network, right? You know? Um, you know, and as well, we um, black people, not particularly us, but, you know, black people in general, uh, you know, we're desperate for black, to see black people in the media, right? Because we don't see that as often as we should so when we do see ourselves we oftentimes you know really watch the shows a lot like that's how you know like these like a lot of these reality shows do really well in the ratings right like you know the housewives of atlanta or love and hip-hop um basketball wives right flavor of love i love new york <laughs> you know like that's because like we just aren't used to really seeing ourselves that much and when we do see ourselves we really want to you know tune in and watch right um but you notice she went the black route because she like she initially trying to market it towards the white women who viewed her talk show but they didn't really go for it all right you know, like, they didn't really go for it like that. Because white people have, like, so many different options to choose from to see themselves on TV, right? So it's like, you know, yeah, you know, we'll, see. we'll catch you next next time, Oprah, right? <clears throat> um, but, you know, let's keep it real, you know, no shade to Oprah. But, you know, Oprah don't really mess with black people like that. Right? She don't really mess with black people like that. I won't say that she don't have anything to do with black people because she, you know, she has a few, but you got to be of a certain economic status to deal with Oprah. You know, you got to be of a certain uh, social class to deal with Oprah. You got to be of a certain skin tone to deal with Oprah. You know, you know what I'm saying. And you know, and to the actors, and as well as the viewers who watch their shows, like, basically, if Oprah's giving checks, you know, and you looking for work, and you, you know, need some, need a job as a black actor, you know, look over the paperwork, see if it's, you know, see if the price and the payment works for you. If so, go for it, good for you. But, you know, just be aware, you know, just don't read too much into it as like, you know, Oprah's down with black people, because, no... No, you know, basically just make sure you know where you stand with Oprah, right? Just make sure you don't get too involved or too emotionally attached to Oprah, you know? Because <clears throat> she, she, she ain't feeling you like you think you, you think she may be feeling you, right? Tyler Perry, because I don't think... I'm not sure if she probably would be fooling with Tyler Perry if everything had went according to plan, the initial plan that Oprah had. I don't know. <laughs> um, and, you know, one more thing I want to mention. Um, Oprah running for president, possibly. It's like, eh. You know, I think she gave a speech at, like, something, some 
some um, award show. I think Oprah gave a speech, where I guess she may have hinted at possibly running for president, you know. And, you know, some people said it was a nice speech, but felt like it didn't really have much substance to it. I didn't actually hear the speech, so I can't say. But I will say that, hmm, eh, you know what, I won't say anything. Yeah, I won't say anything, all right? Uh, this video went a little longer than I thought it would. I went on a bit of a, uh, went on a, bit of a rant. I apologize for that. Uh, but thanks for watching. Please leave me your comments. Do you think I'm overreacting? Do you, do you think I'm on to something? Let me know. So thanks for watching. Adios and goodbye for now.